Okay, today we're going to talk about some elementary potential flows and how they can be combined to, sh to generate flow fields similar to those over airfoils and how we can use that to determine how to generate lift from, or how, to, how lift is generated from the circulation around a body. This is from your textbook as well, sections 3.9 to 3.16. Okay, so here are our simplifying assumptions. We're going to be dealing with 2D, steady, incompressible. irritational flow. Generally, we're also going to be dealing with inviscid flow as well. And we're going to build up several elementary potential flows um, as a toolbox. The written notes are going to contain more detail uh, on these flows. In this lecture, I'm going to focus on those that we need directly to move forward to determining the, uh, how to generate lift. So the most fundamental of these flows is uniform flow, which is as boring as it sounds. So if we have a coordinate system like this, uniform flow means streamlines are everywhere parallel. So V infinity equals a constant. For this, it's very simple to show that the divergence of the velocity is zero, and also that the curl of the velocity is zero. And this is since the velocity potential uh, x derivative is u. So in this case, that's v infinity. And if you do y is v, this is 0. So by integrating, with respect to x, we can get that the velocity potential is v infinity x plus some function of y. Uh, and then if we integrate with respect to y, we get, since there's no functional dependence here, some constant plus g times x. So the velocity potential, potential is v infinity times x plus constant. And we can pick anything we like for this constant, so let's just choose 0. So then v equals v infinity x, simply by a similar kind of derivation, you can get that the stream function is v infinity y. One thing that's helpful is to look at how you would write this in polar coordinates, because we'll often use these for some of the other types of flows that we're going to consider. So here the transformation at x is r cos theta, and y is r sine theta, so then we get that the potential is v infinity r cos theta, and the stream function is v infinity r sine theta. Uh, the circulation which you'll recall is the 
closed path integral, negative of the closed path integral of the velocity dotted with the s. Well, we'll work out that uh, the circulation, if we draw this out, we've got v infinity on the top. If we draw, take a, a box somewhere in the flow, v infinity on the bottom, zero on this side. This has height h, and this has length l. Then the circulation is minus v infinity l plus zero minus v infinity l plus zero, which equals zero, as we would expect. So this is a basic building block for nearly all the potential flows of aerodynamic interest. Basically, this is the background flow that we're disturbing by adding some other potential flows on top. Now, the next type of flow that we need to think about is source and or sink flow. So this is maybe the easiest to explain by drawing a picture. Here's the origin. This is what the flow is doing for a source. It's coming out in every direction. Due to conservation of mass, the radial velocity must be proportional to 1 over r. d theta is 0. So the divergence is 0 except at the origin. Now we're going to find often that this is the case is that some of our basic conditions will be violated at a single point in some of these potential flows. In general, it'll turn out that that point is inside the body of interest and so isn't actually part of the flow field. And so that's why we don't care about these localized exceptions. The curl is zero. A sink is just the opposite where these arrows are going inward. So you can think of that like a top-down view of a drain. Now draw that to make it a little bit more clear what I mean. You have a surface with a drain in it. With some mass flow going through the drain, the sink indicates the flow coming in from all directions to feed that drainage flow. Now, this point in the center where the divergence is not zero, um, and where the radial velocity becomes infinite, as you can see would happen here, is called the singularity. Now, it's possible to show that the potential flow around any body of arbitrary shape can be considered to be induced by some certain distribution of singularities over the surface of the body. And this is really the main type of way of solving for flows around, around these kinds of bodies. Now, the source of the strength of the sink um, is going to be some constant that defines this proportionality so that we can actually write vr equals some constant over r. Um, now, from this picture of the sink, it's possible to realize that this strength is clearly going to be related to the volume flow rate going down this drain, or the volume flow rate of the source or sink. Now, because of it being an incompressible flow, that volume flow rate will, of course, be independent of radius. So you just have to think about the flow rate at, at, at through a circle centered at the origin uh, at any radius, and we define the strength, capital lambda, to be the mass flow rate over the density uh, and 
one meter of thickness into the page. And since we're going all the way around a circle, we're doing the integral from 0 to 2 pi of vr, r v theta, which is just 2 pi r vr. So this tells us that we can write vr, rearranging this, is pi, so that's our lambda, over 2 pi r. And if lambda is positive, we have a source. If lambda is negative, we have a sink. Now, for stream uh, function and the velocity potential, uh, I won't go through the derivation here, but we can get that the velocity potential is lambda over 2 pi on r. And the stream function is lambda over 2 pi theta. The circulation is 0 since the vorticity is 0. Now, it's possible to immediately use these two building blocks we have, source or sink and a uniform flow, to construct a flow that looks something like an aerodynamic flow of interest, which is a flow around a leading edge. And it's basically a uniform flow plus a, a source of some strength. I won't go through that in this lecture. You can read through it in the notes if you want to know more. If you then add a sink downstream, so we've got a uniform flow, we've got a source, and some distance downstream, we have a sink, we'll get a streamlined pattern that looks something like this. And inside, we're going to have loops of fluid flow coming around. To form a closed body. And if you're having a hard time visualizing it, this is the closed body. It's symmetric, and this body is what we call a Rankine oval. Now, that's not particularly of aerodynamic interest. So I won't spend much time on it. Instead, what I'll talk about is what happens if this source and sink here are moved closer together and in the limit that the distance of separation between them goes to zero. And that results in something we call a doublet. So here, if B is the separation distance between the source and sink, so that's B, then as B tends to zero, the strength times the distance must remain constant as we bring them closer together. Then we get that the stream function will be the limit as b tends towards 0 of k 
sorry, kappa equals, we'll use kappa for the strength times the separation distance, and this is being held constant as b tends towards zero. And this is the stream function for the uh, source or sink. Um, and the derivation for this in full is in the text, but the result is that we get a stream function like this. Kappa minus kappa over 2 pi sine theta over r and phi the velocity potential is kappa over 2 pi cos theta over r. The flow field generated by a doublet looks like this. There's the doublet. And we have concentric, sorry, non-concentric circles, circles that share a single point of candidacy. And on the top, the circles are rotating clockwise. On the bottom, they're rotating counterclockwise. And you can almost think of this as a baseball pitching machine. It's going to pull throw flow along the center so that along the center line, there's a net velocity. And you can relate the height of these circles to kappa over 2 pi c, some constant. So a doublet has both a strength and a sense of direction. This doublet flows to the left. And the sine of kappa determines the sense of direction. Note again, if the origin is here at the center, there is again a singularity at the origin for the doublet. Now, we now have enough pieces to come up uh, with a potential flow for a, a situation that we looked at in class last time, which was the flow over a cylinder. So let me start a new page. And now we're going to figure out how to construct using our elementary potential flows, the non-lifting flow over a circular cylinder. And this is what we have to do. It's a uniform flow. Plus a doublet. So to draw this, we have a uniform flow, g infinity. We have pushing against the stream. A doublet of strength kappa. And this gives us falling. the cylinder, there's flow, clockwise on top, counterclockwise on bottom, and we've got a dividing stream line at the center, and on the upper surface, and on the lower surface, stream lines that divert around the cylinder. 
The top half of the cylinder has clockwise flow and the bottom half has counterclockwise flow. So if we take r squared, the radius of the cylinder squared, by definition, to be kappa over 2 pi v theta, then we get that the stream function is v theta r sine theta times 1 minus r squared over big r squared over little r squared. And r, is, again, is the cylinder radius. So this flow has all the features that we identified last time in lecture. There's stagnation point at the leading and trailing edges. The flow decelerates to zero here, then starts speeding up again as it moves around the upper and lower surface of the cylinder. Now, we need to do a reality check here. Because this flow field, as you saw in lecture on Tuesday, is symmetric about both the x and y axes. So, no lift uh, is generated, which is easy to believe because it's a symmetric body. There's also no drag, though, which can't be right. And this comes back to the streamline patterns uh, for inviscid, low Reynolds number, and high Reynolds number flow that we discussed in class last time. And so this is really showing what a limit of, the, of potential flow modeling, which is an inviscid flow model, uh, is, which is that we can't predict the separation, as we talked about, that will occur downstream in the cylinder that results in a, uh, a type of drag that's known as form drag. And this form drag is basically drag that's related to the shape of an object. There's a name for this discrepancy, so potential flow cannot predict drag. The name for this is D'Alembert's A-L-E-M-B-E-R-T apostrophe S paradox. Which is that no drag is predicted by potential flow. Now, that might seem to be prohibitive since drag is an important feature that we wish to compute and know about typically in fluid mechanics situations. But this potential flow theory, theory is still very useful so long as we keep this limitation in mind. And we'll see additional uh, applications for this as we move forward.